Live from Michigan City, Indiana, it's Long Arm TV with Jamie Wallen. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Quilter's Apothecary. Today, we are going to actually do an amazing border treatment that I think you're going to really love. So number one, what we're going to do is show you the completed border treatment so you can see where we're heading, and then we'll go into our step-by-steps. Okay, so here you can see what the completed border treatment looks like, and I have the top row done. We have our three triangles, and what I did was I did a different one in the middle. Now, I'm going to show you in, uh, in the actual tutorial part um, this particular method of doing it this way, but there's tons of things that you can put in here. And then, as you can see, I did something completely different on the outside portions. So we're going to go over that a little bit. But again, remember, these are just the bones, and you come up with how much meat you want on the bones. So let's go ahead and let's get started with the step-by-steps. So we're going to locate the center of the border. We're going to put a line right up through the center, making sure to line this up with the seam line. Mark. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to miter the corners. So we're going to come over here and we're going to line that up. And we're going to add a miter. Now the, also, another thing that I've done is I've gone in a quarter of an inch, in a quarter to a half of an inch, whichever you prefer. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to repeat that same process. Line that up. mark. Now I could use the thick one or the thin one, and I'm choosing to use this one. So now we're going to miter the corner. I'm going to line this up. I'm going to get my 45 degree going both ways so that I get a nice 45 degree right to the tip. And now I'm going to work my way towards the center by using this, and I'm going to repeat the 45 degree. I'm going to keep my 45 degree right on the seam line. I'm going to come right over. And remember, we want to take it up to the quarter inch or half inch binding line. We're going to come down. And now what we're going to do is we're here towards the center. Now the special thing about the center is that if we line this up with our 45 degree line, it's not going to hit exactly where it needs to hit. It's going to be just a little bit off. So we're always going to err to the center line so that that way everything from the corner in is going to be perfect 45 degrees until you get to the center and then the oddball is going to be in the center and that's going to look planned. So now rather than lining this up, and hitting up here, which is a ways away from that, I'm just going to take this, line this up, and I'm going to line it up right to here. So that'll be the only oddball in the quilt. And now we're going to move to the other side and repeat that process on the opposite side. So now we're going to repeat that process and mirror it on the opposite side, and we're always going to be working from the corner in. So I'm going to line that up again so that this is lined up perfect with this. That's the 45 degree on our designer 2. Line that up so you get that lovely miter. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to line this one up and I'm going to repeat that process that we did on the way across the opposite way. Go out a little bit more. And let me darken that line just a little bit. Okay, and now on this one, again, if we used our 45 degree, it would hit on even. So I'm going to go ahead.
and line that up. like that. So now we have a perfect division from the corner in. So what I've done now is I've locked my stitches here and now what I'm going to do rather than starting down here and working my way up and possibly being off in the corner as I work my way all the way up, I am going to start in the center. I'm going to go all the way up here, come back, and then down and up so that that way I have a nice bold line and that's the way that I prefer to do that so that it always hits right in the center here. So I'm going to grab my ditch ruler, line that up, and what I love about these new ditch rulers is that I've got this tab that I can actually utilize and I'm going to go ahead, hit my start, I'm on a very slow cruise speed. I'm going to go back and forth, back, forth, and because I want this to pop, because I'm using decorative thread, I'm going to go all the way up, line it up, make sure that I'm straight on there, then I'm going to continue all the way up, and I'm going to go right off that edge. Back, forth, back, forth, come down, come down there, line that up, and again, I'm going to line the tab up with that, and I'm going to sneak in here, snip my tail, and again, I'm using my K. Buckley scissors, which I absolutely love. You can get them on our website. Gonna line that up all the way down, back, down, back, come down, stop, freeze, line that up, go right here, come over, back, down. Back, down, back, stop, shift my ruler, line that up. Again, I'm going to thicken that line just a little bit. I want it nice and bold. Go right to the center. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from here all the way up to the corner. So I'm going to line that up right in there. Stop. Shift my ruler. Line it up. And now I'm simply going to go ahead, I'm going to come over here, and now I'm going to work my way down here, and I'm going to head all the way over towards the center. Now I'm going to reline that up, and thickening that line. Turn the ruler. Now I'm going to head up the other way.
I'm going to follow that seam right over. Turn the ruler again. And now I'm going to head down this way. And now as we're doing this, what we'll do is we'll speed up the camera. I'm going to come down and do this down to here so that that way I can hit this direct and then go up, down, and down, and up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I want to divide these in half all the way over. So I'm going to line this up, get it nice and straight on that line, then I'm going to take it from the peak down. And I want to make sure to line that up so that it's a nice straight line. Line that up. Straight line, line that up, straight line, and so now I have a nice line through each of these. And I'm going to go ahead and darken it in just a little bit. Now I have my center line here as you can see and I'm going to take this, I'm going to go in and I'm going to use a half of an inch and I'm going to measure half of an inch and I'm going to go right to that line right there. Because I want to give myself some negative space. Half of an inch. Now if I have to fudge here, I fudge here but I keep that at a half of an inch. So I want to make sure that that meets up. And what that does when I do that is that's going to go ahead and make sure that I meet here without having to stop. Now I'm going to continue that all the way across in each of the triangles. Line it up half of an inch. Line it up half of an inch. Again, I want to make sure to match that. And now I'm going to continue that all the way across.
So now I'm going to start here and I'm going to do all of the outside triangles. And I'm going to go ahead, lock my stitches here, come up, over, back, up, up, down, over, down, all the way across the top of the quilt. And then what I'll do is I'll start here, lock my stitches, and then I will go up, down, and all the way over. Now I'm going to go on the inside all the way across. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the double X large and I'm going to right up in the middle with the ruler, line that up and I'm going to go right up until I get that nice quarter inch away from the hopping foot on both sides. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to quilt that and then I'm going to move that away and I'm going to bring in my Mr. Curve 2, and it is going to be the 25 inch. And I'm going to take that up and I'm going to slide that up to give me a double. I've locked my stitches in the corner. I'm going to take this, I'm going to line this up on here. I'm going to go right up. So that that way, that is right on that foot. And then over here on this side, I'm going to make sure that I am a quarter inch away from that corner. I'm going to hold that steady. Come down right to the corner and that hits perfect. Stop. So now I was going to use the 25 but I changed my mind because what I actually want is I want a higher arc. So I decided no on this one and instead I decided to use the extra large instead. So I'm going to slide that up. And again, I'm going to make sure that this lines up right to the center. Line that right up. Get right under that foot. I'm on my ruler. 
and I make sure that I'm a quarter inch away. There. Now, I pull that away. I've got this wonderful negative space. And now we're going to go in here and put a design as well as up here. Now I've come to the center, right in that center line. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my lotus. I'm going to start with my teardrop. Back, bump, fronds. Swing back, bump, front, neck. Back, bump, front, bump, front. Stop there, keep going. I'm going to take this. Now I'm going to head this way. Back, bump, front, back, bump, front, back, bump, front, bump, front. Okay, so now I have this wonderful design and now I'm going to slide right up here. So now I'm going to come this way. I'm going to go ahead, do my teardrop, teardrop, up, bump, double bump, scoop around, keep it tight, give myself a vein, up, Back, new fronds, up, back, double bump, give myself a vein, all the way down to here. And now I'm going to come up on this side. So I'm going to go up, bump, double bump, swing around, vein, up. Okay, so now for just a minute, what I want to do is talk a little bit. We just did this block right here where I started. And then what we did next is I went ahead and I did this one. And since this one was in the center, I did a little bit of a different design for this particular one. And then what I did is, of course, the same design over here on this side. So I did all of my inner triangles 
And then what I did is I went ahead and I, instead of mirroring, because I could have mirrored. Now, obviously what I could have done was repeated this design here, here, and here on the outside and just faced them opposite. Now, the one thing that I want to make sure, in case I didn't mention it when we actually filmed the tutorial, is um, right here I went in a half of an inch or a quarter of an inch and I took into account my binding space so that that way that was already prepared. Now, so again, if I did mirror it, you want to make sure to take into account your binding space. So now the next thing I did was I went ahead over here in the corner and I went in a half of an inch and I chalked half inch in V, went in another half inch and did a V, another half inch, did a V, another half inch, did a V, another half inch, V, another half inch, V. And then here, working my way to the center, because remember here is the center, I went ahead and marked from this edge, half inch, chalk, half inch, chalk. I always like to pre-mark it before I actually do it. I keep going, okay? And do you want to full screen that, Mr. Ritchie? Okay, so now, and then what I did was I started over here and I repeated my way from the outside in, so that that way it started, it worked its way from the corner into the center. So now, the next thing, are we ready for that next section, Mr. Ritchie? Okay, so there we go. Now, um, what I did was then went in and filled every other line, just like we saw at the beginning of this particular live tutorial. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. That is one way to do an incredible border. Um, and again, that's a pretty diverse design. You can do a lot of different things in there. I, I could have just skipped the feathers and just simply done the straight lines. So before we sign off today, let's check to see if there are any questions. Any questions, Mr. Ritchie? I think we've been answering them as we go. And again, my apologies. This is a new method that Jamie has me trying out. So. Uh, it's learn as we go. I have an awful lot of buttons over here and 
to be honest, he just keeps changing what he wants me to do. So, <laughs> you know, it's kind of fun to see him sweat once in a while. So, and he was sweating. I saw him over there doing the, oh no, what do I do? And that was kind of fun. We may have to get some new tools as well. So again, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, whether you're from the States or um, not from the States, welcome. Um, and then next week we will be doing another one. Um, and actually, we're going to be working on a client quilt um, that I'm excited about. And so that'll be a pretty good one. Um, and we'll try to do the same format. What I liked about this format was that actually we pre-filmed the quilting portions because we found out last week that moving the camera around was a little bit hectic. So that way, and we got better shots for you. And then this way, we can do the live section as well as that. Plus, I can do picture in a picture. There's a lot of different things we can do. Hopefully, he can do. We'll see if he can handle so, that one. So somebody had brought up, uh, and we'll have to do this. Uh, they're asking if you can put the micro foot, Handy Quilter's new micro foot on, and do some of the micro work so they can see actually the quilting happening. Absolutely. In fact, what we'll do, if you'd like, is uh, maybe within the next few weeks, maybe not next week, but maybe next week, we'll see. Um, I'll, I'll just do some micro work and actually I'll kind of go through the process of how I do micro work um, and show you some different designs that you can do micro work. That's a great idea. I will do that for you. Absolutely. Especially when you haven't done it. It's very confusing when you see people do it. And it's hard to see <laughs> when you have a ruler foot on because I was bouncing back and forth from um, rulers. So we sure will. That's it? Okay. All right, everybody. Go have an incredible weekend. Know you're loved. Take care of yourself and take care of each other. We'll see you down the road. Mm -hmm.